Hi there, my name is Edsel Villadaz and I am a success engineer here at Xplenty. We provide an ETL platform that is available in the Elements Marketplace, which allows you to create automated data pipelines running to and from Heroku Postgres. Uh, in this video, uh, which is part two of a two-part video series on how to use Xplenty with Heroku Connect, I will show another example of how customers that use Heroku Connect can leverage Xplenty to quickly and easily extend the benefits of Heroku Connect's bi-directional sync to Salesforce out to external services and data stores. So here again, I have my app set up with Heroku Connect provisioned alongside Heroku Postgres. And this is connected to my Salesforce org and has been set up to sync a few select objects down to Postgres that um, you know I may want to bring external data into or take data that's come from Salesforce and send that out to an external database or data warehouse or even a flat file via Xplenty. So this use case uh, for this part two video here will be taking the account object and the contact object from Salesforce and joining those two tables together and pushing them out into a MySQL database. All right, and from here, we'll just quickly jump over to Salesforce and check out the accounts. As you can see, I have a table here with a few fields that we are looking to bring in. I also want to bring in the contacts object. So a slightly larger table, and what we'll do is we're going to join these two on Xplenty uh, using their ID. All right, so let's hop back in over to Heroku Connect. And from here, we can jump into Xplenty by clicking the Xplenty app. And again, alternatively, we can set up some logins um, and head to xplenty.com, and we can access Xplenty that way as well. All right, so we are here on the connections page over at Xplenty. As you can see, we have three connections built out earlier from part one of this video series, uh, and we've built out a Heroku Postgres, MySQL, and S3 connection. But let me go ahead and open the connections page here again. As you can see, we have a plethora of uh, native connectors that you can utilize to connect to whatever source you are needing to use. For example, we have uh, analytical databases, data warehouses such as Google BigQuery and Amazon Redshift. Of course, you have the ability to connect to other relational databases as well such as AWS Postgres or Heroku, and a list of services um, that leverage uh, APIs. And of course, you're not limited to what you see here on this page. If it has an API built on top of the service, then we will most likely be able to access it. And I just want to go over a quick example for those that missed part one on what a uh, setting up a connection looks like. So let me just go ahead and open the Heroku Postgres connection here. As you can see, we have a few fields um, that we needed to just fill out here. We have our name. We are able to choose an access type. Um, and here we can choose whether we want a direct connection or a tunnel connection. We need our host name. And if your database utilizes SSL, you want to make sure that you have connect using SSL checked. We have our database that we need to provide, our username, and our password. And once we have those all filled in, you'll notice that we have the test connection button there that we can use to test our connection before we create it, just to make sure that we have our connection established 100%. All right, and from here, let's go ahead and build our packages. We'll hop over to the package page. Uh, as you can see, we have one package built out already from part one. Let's go ahead and create a new package. We'll go ahead and give our package a name here. Call this one Heroku, Postgres to MySQL. We can add a description uh, if we'd like. And we can choose our types of flows. So as I mentioned earlier in part one, we have two types of flows here in Xplenty. And just to summarize them again, our data flows is what utilizes your, your standard data pipelines, meaning that this is what will have your source, transformations, and your destination. Whereas the workflow allows you to set dependencies between packages that you've built so that you can provide a sequence um, in which order 
you would like these packages to run and I will get into workflows a little bit more later into this video. So let's go ahead and create a package. So again, we have our blank slate here. And what we want to do is we are again going to take data from Salesforce and push that into an external database, this being MySQL. So let's go ahead and add a component. And looking through our list of sources here, again, you can see that we have a bunch of options to choose from. We have REST a our REST API source component, our NetSuite component, um, Amazon Redshift, and things like that. But for our example here, we'll go ahead and select database and open it up. We'll go ahead and rename this. So we want to take our account object and our contact object. We cannot do the dash, so let me put the underscore. So we'll call this SF account. We'll choose our Heroku Postgres connection. And we have two modes of access here. We have our table uh, access mode and query. So table, as you can see, is just um, a matter of specifying a schema name and a table name. This query is where you can actually just run an entire SQL query if you choose to do so. Um, but for example, here we'll go ahead and use table and we'll enter our schema. And again, we can include work clauses if we'd like. Go ahead and click next. And here we are. So we brought our table over from Heroku Postgres and we can now see a preview of that data and what that looks like, which is really great, of course, just so we know that we're bringing in the correct table and all of our fields match up here. So we can choose to bring in all of our fields by hitting the select all uh, option there. And once we choose select all, oh, it looks like it doesn't like the underscores starting off the column names there. So we'll go ahead and change that. But we don't need uh, all the fields, so we'll go ahead and choose a few. We'll choose name, ID, billing, country, currency, and deal size, and phone. And those are what we need for the example. The thing I do want to quickly point out here is that you can see the data types of the fields that we're pulling in here. At this level, we can actually just change those data types into uh, something else. So for example, the ID field there, if you want to change it from an integer to just a string, we can do that. Um, but we can go ahead and uh, save. Okay, and what we can do here actually is copy this um, component by either highlighting it and pressing Control C or just pressing the copy button. And we'll and really easy. We just get another copy of the component, uh, move it around. We'll pop it open, and this one will be taking the contact object instead of the account. Um, same connection. We'll go ahead and do the same schema. We'll just change the table name here. Um, no further settings. We'll go ahead and hit next. And now that we have a few different fields in, we'll go ahead and just click that. So the uh, tool will replace that for you automatically. <clears throat> but again, we don't need all of the fields here. So we'll go ahead and remove. And we'll just choose the individual fields we need, um, which for this example will be name will be name, title, uh, email, and ID, and the mailing country. So another quick preview of our table. Go ahead and hit save here. All right, now we'll add our transformation component. So for our transformation components, you can see we have a, a plethora of options to choose from here as well. Now everything but the select component is gonna be no code table level transformations. So these are really great in that, you know, to utilize them, all you really need to do is plug in a few fields and you are good to go. So let me go ahead and show an example of that by uh, using the uh, join. And we'll go ahead and drag that over and to connect, oh, let me, to connect the, um, components together, we just need to drag and uh, drop the line here. Once we have our join component open, as you can see, we can uh, choose on uh, whether we want the SF account on the left or the right. We have a few join types to choose from. Um, inner join, of course, left, right, and full. So we'll go ahead and choose full for the example. Uh, we have a few optimizations, default, replicated, and skewed. We're going to go ahead and use the default as that utilizes the hash join. And we need to just identify our ID, 
uh, key that we want to join on here being ID and let's go ahead and rename this to full join on ID go ahead and save that great so after our join we'll go ahead and um, do some field level transformations by using the select component we'll go ahead and rename this to transformations we'll go ahead and autofill all right, we bring in all of the fields that we want to play around with um, in this table. Uh, and we can go ahead and actually reorganize the order in which these columns appear in the table. So we'll go ahead and do that. Title, got email up there, and phone. Perfect. Awesome. And we went ahead and reorganized the table. Now we can start doing some transformations. Um, and let me open up the expression editor here. All right. And if you look to the left, um, once we're in our expression editor, you'll see a bunch of folders. These uh, organize our 150 functions that you can use to perform those transformations on your data here in X Plenty. Um, we have a bunch of functions ranging from string functions to mathematical functions. But for this example, we'll go ahead and look for the replace. And as you can see, once I highlight over this function, you can see that it offers a quick description of what it does and the parameters that it takes. The second argument, you can either input a string or put a regex there. So that's what I'll go ahead and do. And what I'm trying to do here with this function is we're going to replace uh, every character in the email except um, for the at symbol with an asterisk, uh, just so we can hide the contact or account name's email address uh, for security purposes. I'll do the same thing with the phone, but instead of using the at symbol, we're gonna go ahead and use a dash. And what we can do here also is add another column. Um, and here, let's use our predefined variable, package last successful. And what this will do is it'll give us a timestamp on, you know, when exactly we move the data from Salesforce over to MySQL. All right. And so it looks like uh, we have everything we need. We'll go ahead and save that. And what we need to do now is send this to our destination. So I actually wanted to send this to do two destinations. So I'll go ahead and choose the clone component. And what this will do is it will let me send it to my SQL by selecting the database destination. We'll open this up, uh, rename this to my SQL and choose my SQL connection. Um, We'll go ahead and enter the table we want it in. Here we want Heroku test. We can choose our operation type. I'm going to go with over right here. We can perform some pre-action and post-action SQL statements if we so choose. And we have a few advanced options we could play around with as well. So step three is just mapping. Um, and uh, we can just autofill here and get everything we need. It looks like we want the... Yeah, no, that's everything we need. So we'll go ahead and save. And with the clone component, I can send it to another destination. And for debugging, I'm going to go ahead and send it to S3. And we'll change the name of this guy. Hit next. Now here, I just have to specify the target bucket in my S3 that this is going into, as well as define the directory. Okay, we can choose our delimiter. I'm going to go ahead and enter some string qualifiers here and some escape characters settings we go ahead write the field names in the header we can choose to compress um, this output if we would like you can also merge outputs if you have multiple outputs that you plan on um, exporting here we can all out merge them into one single file and we'll go ahead and save that Great, awesome, and that is our pipeline. Before we run our job here, we can go ahead and do a few more things. So if we go to the top here and click Save and Validate, so this will save our pipeline while also going through it to make sure we don't have any uh, immediate errors that we can fix right away, such as typos and data type mismatches, things like that. We can go ahead and hit Run Job since we validated it. 
Uh, one more thing, actually, is uh, now that we've saved it, we can now utilize the rollback feature. So every time you save, it'll go ahead and increment the version of this pipeline. And if we would like to go back to a previous version, we can definitely go ahead and do that. So now let's go ahead and run the job. Again, here we just need to create a cluster. And what a cluster is, is the resource that we spin up here on our side to be able to run these jobs uh, for you. So we have the two environments, the sandbox and production. Sandbox, of course, is where your dev uh, will be taking place. So anything um, that you're doing uh, in testing, you'd want to attach a sandbox cluster to. Whereas a production cluster is something you would use once uh, testing is completed and you're running things in production. So we'll go ahead and hit next. Once we have our uh, cluster built, we can choose a package again and make any last minute changes to uh, variables that we've set up. This example specifically, we do not have any variables, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's jump in um, over to our packages because now I want to talk about workflows. So let's create a new package. Um, go ahead and give this a name. All right, and we're going to choose workflow and create the package. Okay, so it looks really similar, but the first thing you'll notice is that instead of adding components, we add tasks at the very top here. So let me go ahead and do that. We have two tasks to choose from. You can either run a package that you've built or execute a SQL query. So let me just show what the execute SQL query will look like. We open this up and we choose a connection that we'd run a, like to run a query on. So for example, we'd like to run a query in the Heroku Postgres connection. We can specify that query here in this field and we can match any results to a data type and push that into a variable and pass that variable throughout different packages here on this workflow. So going on to the next step here, step three, we have the option to uh, execute this task if all preceding conditions evaluate to true or one of them uh, evaluates to true. So we have that option as well. All right, and that is the execute SQL task. Let's go ahead and run a package here. Um, and so let's open that guy up. We can name this to package A. Oop, A, there you go. And then choose the Heroku Postgres MySQL package. Hit next. And edit any variables here. And again, um, settings, uh, whether or not we want that to run, and or or. All right, we'll go do another one. Uh, call this package B. We'll go ahead and choose the other package. Again, step two and three. You can customize if, as you see fit. We'll go ahead and add a third package here. Open it up and call it package C. And we'll choose um, the first package again here. We'll go ahead and next, and next one more time. We don't need any changes there, so save it. And if we click on the green arrow, then we can choose on failure. So now what this will do is package A, if it were to succeed, it will run package B. If not, it'll run package C. So that is what a workflow looks like and how you can leverage workflows to uh, better customize your data pipeline. Go ahead and quick save this. We'll go ahead and jump over to our jobs and see how that's doing. Okay, it looks like everything has completed. Uh, and so that's great. Let's go jump over to uh, S3 since we went ahead and uh, pushed this table to S3 as well for debugging. We go refresh this and we should have our file pop up here. Awesome, Heroku test. Let's open that guy up. Let's open here and let's open this file. All right, great, awesome. And here we go, we have a full join of our um, account and uh, contact object here. As you can see, not every contact had an account name attached to it and not every account name had contacts attached to it 
but you know we were able to hide those emails and those phone numbers as well as include a time uh, daytime field um, for when we uh, exported the this data from Salesforce to MySQL. And there you go. That concludes part two of our two-part series. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope this was useful and showed a great deal as to how powerful a tool Xplenty uh, really is. Thank you and have a great day.